Welcome back to PAX Unplugged. Jason Levine from the Dice Tower here with designer Jeff Engelstein. And this has been a good year for you. Actually, the last two have been good for you. Yeah, it's been, uh, we've been designing a lot. I've had like four or five games come out over the last two years. So it's been really busy, but an exciting time. Yeah, I mean, this year you had Pit Crew, which is really makes you insane as you're rolling those dice. Six, six, six. Yes. Yeah, well, I, I, I've done a whole series of speed games, so I, I like that kind of speed and real-time aspect. When I was growing up, I loved the game Spit. To, to be able to do a takeoff on that was a lot of fun. It's just a quick little, like, a bonbon of a game. So not really super deep and meaty, but it's fun. No, it is fun. It's 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 crazy. It, it, I mean, the, the speed that you have to do everything, you know, I'm screaming the whole time when I play this game. <laughs> yes, and I really like the team dynamic. I like having games where you're playing as a team together and you got to kind of work and have that communications. And I mean, and that's one, there's, there's certainly a healthy dose of luck, but uh, you know, the teams that work well together in general are going to do better. So I, I just like the social aspects of that, that you're, you're on a team fighting against the other players. Yeah, I mean, luckily my team wasn't Tom, so we, we, we did very well. Yeah, yeah, I kind of got that feeling from, uh, from talking to Tom, but yeah. And, but, you know, look, I know some people aren't as good with the speed games and don't like them as much, but uh, for me, I mean, they, they, they're hit a little fun, little quick 20, 15, 20 minute burst. I think it's great. You had a much bigger game come out this year based on a TV show, The Expanse. Now, this one, I, I've been saying to everyone out there how much I love this game because I love Twilight Struggle. So just tell me how you decided to come up with this. Uh, well, it was, um, I, I'm really excited about this game. I'm a huge fan of the books. I started watching some of the TV series, but I could like just see that game in my head of what it needed to be and what it, what it was. So, um, uh, so I wanted to build it on something that I knew would be really work well and, and would fit the theme. And so taking that idea of like a Cold War mechanic where you're working, you know, just trying to influence things and spread your influence in various tricky ways. I thought it was a good fit for it and just so I had to take that idea and make it work with four players but also add asymmetrical powers and fleets and, you know, a little bit of combat and just some stuff to, to make it fit the theme better. So, yeah, I was really happy with the way that it came out in the end. Yeah, I mean, me too. Like, like I tell everyone, if you like Twilight Struggle, you will love this game and especially because no one makes multiplayer versions of it and I mean there's a few but not many and not many well done and you you've done a multiplayer version and balanced it well yeah um, it it was it was a lot of work and there was a lot of missteps along the way for sure but I think in the end we hit on a really nice smooth system I may even see if I can try to use it in some other properties some other games because I just like the core system of the way the you can take the action or the event but if you don't take the event there's a priority system of other players that, that get it, and there's a nice little tension there. Do I want to take this event, which is maybe I can do it, and I can do it right now and do it for free, or I can, you know, but if I do that, I'm going to drop to the end of the priority, so I might not be able to get some other juicy events that come up later, or am I going to let somebody else pick it up? So this it adds a lot of interesting little decision points for players without a lot of rules overhead. It's The rules are really straightforward. You took in what would be in a two-player game, well, if you play the card, I get the action because it's my action. Now you have to choose, do you want the action? Do you want to go to the back? It really adds, it really does add that tension to the game. Um, yeah, and like I said, we tried a lot of iterations on that, all of which were much more complicated than what we ended up with. So in the end, I was happy with it. And I was also really happy that uh, even Sam liked the game. So I, this is my 10th game that I've made. And Sam and I have this running thing that he has never liked any game that I've ever designed. So this one he actually liked. He came up to me. He was like, you finally, finally broke the curse. So, so I, was, I was happy about that. <laughs> well, well, we played it at Gen Con for the first time, and I think Sam actually beat me. I know I didn't win, but I think Sam did win. So that explains why he liked it then. Okay, so yeah. <laughs> that might have been why I liked it. No, no, actually, I think he liked it because it's just a very well done game. Um, do you have any plans to add more? Obviously, there's more seasons of the TV show. Um, are you planning to put more into the game in the future? Um, we're, we're talking about it. Um, we're still kind of waiting to see how the sales go, but so far it's been pretty good and the reception has been really good, so that's a definite possibility, but Nothing, nothing that I can announce at this point. I want to do it just so I can have the expanse, the expansion, or the expansion, or so, some sort of. It's got to be some sort of clever title that we can work out with that. So uh, we'll have to see. the expanse, Sean. Uh, 
I'm calling it here first. That's what we're going to call this expansion. The expansion, expansion. Um, th this could be like a, a this could be a segment on ludology now. I can work on that for names. Yeah. Um, look, it's been fun working. A license game has been really neat. I got to go read the scripts for the TV series before it came out. I had to go into a separate little locked room. They took my phone away. And they're like the scripts are all watermarked, and so. But I was just able to take notes about what was going on and who it was. So. So maybe I'll get a chance to do that for the third season now that they're that they're currently filming if they decide to go ahead with an expanse she on. <laughs> so. No, that's great. That's great. I mean, I uh, I think the game's going to stay a success because it fits a lot of different builds. It fits wargamers builds, it fits eurogamers builds. It fits in many different styles and that's why it works so well. Thanks. I I really appreciate that. Um, so besides that, you have a book coming out, don't you? Uh, yes, I did a Kickstarter for uh, the Game Tech book. So all of the stuff I've done for the Dice Tower over the years, uh, the Game Tech segments. This is actually the 10th anniversary of the Game Tech segment on the Dice Tower, which just kind of blows my mind. But I collected like 70 or so of my favorite segments, um, put them together into like a 300-page book, uh, and did it. We had a really successful Kickstarter that went way beyond. I mean, I was figuring maybe we do like three to 500 books, and I ended up selling like 4,000 books. So my garage right now is just a disaster area as I'm trying to get everything in the envelopes and get everything out to the backers. So I appreciate their patience, but it will be coming out very soon. And after that, it's going to be available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble, and you'll be able to get it starting probably in January. You'll be able to, to buy the book online. I just hope that it comes with one of those water jugs that you have to block the holes to be able to drink it. <laughs> I got to get the puzzle jug. I actually got a puzzle jug. One of my listeners to Ludology actually came to the live show at Gen Con. He had made me a puzzle jug and he gave it to me at Gen Con and I was so excited. I have it at a place of honor in my home right now. So, so yeah, I, I'm ready for the puzzle jug. I think this is, uh, you have so many good ones, but I think that's the one that everyone's always talking about. Like everyone I know says they want one of these now. Yep, yep. Yeah, that was when I did the history of drinking games, which is really an interesting topic. So, yeah, it goes back thousands and thousands of years. I think since there's been drinks, there's been drinking games. So, so it was an interesting to research, and I was happy to find out about these puzzle jugs. For those of you who didn't hear it from the, the segment, between like 1400 and 1800, they were really popular of these jugs that you fill with liquid, but they had all kinds of holes and tubes and stuff in them and if you don't drink out of it the right way you got to cover up certain holes you just spill it all over yourself so so you got to you got to know the trick in order to do it they knew how to have fun in the 1700s they had a good time they, they were gamers just like us weren't they yep yep games go back well thank you so much for coming on today jeff engelstein designer it's a pleasure thanks for having me jason this was great and uh this is jason levine for the dice tower with another interview from here at pax unplugged